Those are 61. The motion is not agreed to. Call on members' order of the day number four. Parental leave and employment protection, six months paid leave, amendment bill, first reading. Sue Moroni. I move that the parental leave and employment protection, six months paid leave, amendment bill be now read a first time. Mr Speaker, I nominate the Government Administration Select Committee consider the bill. In Māori Language Week, I want to start with a profound Māori proverb. Hiaha te mia nui, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing? It is people, it is people, it is people. That proverb describes the basic principle behind this bill that I bring to Parliament today. New Zealand can be the best place in the world to raise children. That's the vision that Labour has for this country, and that is the origin for this bill, which I drafted in 2009. It is a lofty and ambitious vision, but it is achievable in a peaceful country like New Zealand. Because we're not war-torn, we don't suffer from famine and drought, and just look at the natural riches and resources we have. We really do have a head start in making this a reality. We really can be the best country in the world to raise children, but the National Party seem like they don't like that idea at all. There are many things that we need to do in New Zealand to fulfil that vision. If Mr Smith would like to listen, I'm talking about a vision. I'm talking about a vision that I know he can't get, but he should listen. And we won't get there unless we're prepared to put children at the heart of our policy making. Unless we decide to prioritise investment in those early years, that's right, Mr Smith and the rest of the National Party, unless we make an investment in those early years. That's what my bill calls for. Extending paid parental leave is just one measure that government can take to invest wisely in those early years. This bill proposes extending paid parental leave by 12 weeks to reach six months over the course of the next three years. It is Labour policy to reach 12 months paid parental leave over time, but I have drafted my bill with this global recession in mind. This bill stages the introduction of extended paid parental leave over the next three years, and the good news is it doesn't reach full implementation until National, National itself, says that it will have the country's books back into surplus in 2015. Yeah, so what's the problem? That's still the plan, isn't it? That's still the plan? Nick Smith's not sure that that's still the plan. But I tell you, I tell you, Mr Speaker, there's an old saying, where there's a will, there's a way. And that is so, that is so very true of paid parental leave. But it does require... It, Mr. Mr Speaker, it does require the political will to do so. I said out at the outset when my bill was drawn that all political parties say families are a priority, but how they vote on my bill will show whether they really mean it or not. At the end of this debate, it will be demonstrated for all to see. This bill does not require the government to borrow any more money for paid parental leave. Instead, it should be funded by repri reprioritising other spending. My personal favourite would be the cancelling of tax cuts for those earning over $150,000, which would more than fund this initiative. But I'd also, it is indeed Labour policy. It is indeed Labour policy. But I'd also settle for cancelling the $1.76 billion construction of the Holiday Highway north of Auckland, where traffic volumes don't warrant the spend, the money being paid to investment bankers for advice on privatising our profitable state assets, the millions being squandered on flawed restructuring plans like the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, or the millions being spent on designing ghost roads. Any of those will do. But my point is that investing in paid parental leave is affordable if there was the will from this government to do so. But the national government has other bad spending priorities. Yeah.
Ironically, the day National threatened to use a financial veto against families needing extended paid parental leave, National also announced it was keeping agriculture out of the emissions trading scheme for longer. The cost to the taxpayer of that decision alone is estimated to be $400 million. That decision alone would pay for extended paid parental leave with plenty of change for other worthy investments. But there was no mention of a financial veto when it came to that decision, was there? Why does National insist that it would have to borrow to pay for extended paid parental leave when it can make a decision costing the taxpayer $400 million at the height of a global recession with apparently no further borrowing? Answer that question, Mr Smith, for us. <laughs> so this government's priorities were spelled out loud and clear on that day in April. They have money to incentivise farmers to pollute for longer, but not for hard-working families raising, raising our next generation. But here's the real clangor. Finance Minister Bill English even stooped to heavily inflating the costs of my bill when he threatened a financial veto on it. That's how strongly National opposes supporting families in this way. He claimed it would cost $500 million, but he had received official advice that the most it would cost was $285.6 million over three years. He almost doubled the cost of it to justify using a financial veto. Working families deserve a fair go. They don't deserve a Minister of Finance who makes up figures to use against them and their needs. But then he is the same Minister who had Treasury work up the cuts to education in the form of increased class sizes. He was out of step with the needs of families then, and he and his party are out of step with them again now. The same week my bill was drawn out of the ballot, the government decided it would spend an additional $11 million on adolescent mental health services. Fair enough. Sadly, there are more of our young people needing those services. It was interesting, though, that there was no hand-wringing over having to borrow money to afford that. But here's the question I want to pose. How much better off would our young people be and how much would the rest of us get to save if we invested money in the early years instead? The Prime Minister's own science, Chief Science Advisor, Sir Peter Gluckman, had this to say on the subject, and I quote him, Mr Speaker. The early years of life have a unique and formative impact on child health development and relationships throughout life. Secure mother-infant attachment is an important predictor of resilience in later life, including higher self-esteem, reduced anxiety and reduced hormonal responses to stress. He went on to say, Mr Speaker, social investment in New Zealand should take more account of the growing evidence that prevention and intervention strategies applied early in life are more effective in altering outcomes and reap more economic returns over the life course than do strategies applied later. This will require long-term commitment to appropriate policies and programmes. If only the Prime Minister would listen to his Chief Science Advisor. There are now several pieces of research showing that for every dollar invested in supporting children and their families in those early years, the rest of us get to save $12 to $17. Now, I come from a horse racing background, and I know that odds of, of getting back at least $12 for every dollar invested, that's what I'd call a dead cert. That's a dead cert. Researchers and scientists like Sir Peter Blackman know that if we get it right in those early months and years, then we don't have to spend as much money on remedial education, on health problems or on youth justice for that matter. But making that smart investment requires a government with vision. It requires a government with courage and a real commitment to a brighter future. Tonight, Labour is stepping up to show that leadership required for that type of government. A government that understands the stresses on working families, a government that really does have a plan for the future, a government that is fiscally responsible, one that promotes more choice for families, and a government that puts children ahead of tax cuts for high-income earners. Extending paid parental leave has gained broad support from the community, and I think this demonstrates significant progress since the bill was introduced by a Labour-led government. Tomorrow, a coalition of community organisations will be launched in support of extending paid parental leave. It is called 26 for Babies, and involves organisations like Plunkett, Every Child Counts, the Council of Trade Unions, UNICEF and the Breastfeeding Authority. Now I've heard from grandparents, from older parents, from younger parents, 
those contemplating parenthood and those who wants babies, who wants babies themselves. That's right, everyone's got a stake in getting this right. Both unions and business representatives support the extending of paid parental leave, and I was very pleased to hear public declarations of support in principle from both Phil O'Reilly of Business New Zealand and Michael Barnett of the Auckland Chamber of Commerce. Oh. Demonstrates a growing recognition of the value of, wo the value, uh, of women in the workplace uh, by employers, and that is not before time. In fact, the 2006 evaluation of our paid parental leave scheme noted that there is widespread support amongst mothers, fathers and employers for paid parental leave. And just last week, the United Nations chastised the New Zealand Government and Women's Affairs Minister Jo Goodhue for our low level of paid parental leave as part of the UN's concerns about discrimination against women in New Zealand. We rank second to last in the developed world for the duration of paid parental leave we offer. Only the United States is below us because they have none at all. Australia used to be below us, but in January last year they introduced 18 weeks paid parental leave. Order. Ten seconds to conclude. Ten seconds. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, my maiden speech in Parliament, I said I wanted to improve work-life balance for New Zealand families. Order. This Time's will up. Do that. It will do that Order. in a way that helps New Zealand Order. children. Order. A point of order, Sue Maroney. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I actually probably should have called a point of order during my speech. The, the barricade no, well, from that no, side of the sit, House... Please sit. Members know that when points of order are taken, they should be taken at the time. I gave the member some generosity over her time. And so when I call times up, the time has gone beyond. The member should sit immediately. Joe, uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Uh, Honourable Joe Goodhue. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā mū, nā mehi.